Hello and welcome back to The Sims 4. Now, I've been working in this desert map again, but it was not on a residential building this time. I've started a new project and this time I have been building a museum. You might be able to see it right here. This is a clock tower museum. It's been a really fun building to build and it's very interesting. <laughs> it's a very unique building. We will load into it here. Now, it is a museum, and it's not technically residential, but I did put a little, like, museum caretaker's, like, little attic room in the top of the building. So, I'm gonna see if I can move somebody in here, but um, I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out. We're, I'm gonna try it, though. Turn off the grids here. So, this is the building that I've been working on. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed building this building. And... The landscaping is, I don't know, I feel like it's pretty on point on this building. You got this fancy fountain here with the all, you know, the all-inclusive fish fountain because I use it everywhere. But it's the only fountain that, like, spits out water that I've been able to find so far. There might be something on the resource um, center, but I haven't been able to find it quite yet. Over here, we just have a little sit area, so if you come to the museum, but you don't really want to go inside, you know, that's not your thing, but your family dragged you here, you can sit outside in the fresh air. I'm sure it has free Wi-Fi here. You know, it's a museum. You gotta have the free Wi-Fi. Um, we just got a flower bed here that someone has been taking really good care of because the blooms this year are crazy. And we can go around back from either side. They're identical. Just two trees and some flowers to give it some color. But around back, back here, we just have a little sit area. A spot where birds can bathe if they need to get a drink or they're feeling dusty, you know. And then I did bring down the hedgerow right here. Just so if you're sitting back here, you can actually take in the view that... It doesn't really let me see. Well, let me pan the camera that way. But, you know, we got this little pond down here, I guess is what that is. And some rocks. So it's not a bad view. Um, but if I could tilt my camera, we'd really be able to see what you could see. But camera won't let me. Now, we will start on the first floor here. The first floor is what I like to call the classical floor or, you know, old world paintings and stuff like that. So when you first walk in, you walk in to this really cool door, which I don't know if I've used this door anywhere else, but has like the big lion golden knocker thing. So it's all properly, um, I guess, classic old world looking. <laughs> but in here we just have, you know, some sculptures. We have a chicken painting because of course, like what speaks more classical than a chicken painting? We have some old typewriter that, you know, some famous author used to use and somehow our museum curator was able to get it and bring it in here. Now we have everything roped off because we can't have people touching the merchandise, right? We can't have people touching the old artwork. And we have more than just sculptures and paintings. We have blacksmith work in here as well. You know, old swords from... I don't know, England, France, somewhere over there in Europe. I'm sure they're exquisite blacks, you know, exquisite craftsmanship. Over here we have an easel that some famous artists used to use. That's why we gotta keep it roped off. We can't have people rubbing off the paint that was put on there by, you know, whoever was famous and used it. And we also have a little train collection here. Or, you know, model train, maybe, that, you know, someone pieced together and we thought it was a cool piece and we brought it into our museum. But over here, we have the lady herself, the Mona Lisa. And I know what you're thinking, she's supposed to be in a museum over in France, but we have the real Mona Lisa. Okay, at my museum, we have the real one. The one over in France is actually... Um, you know, it's a fake, and I believe that she's a lot smaller than this. Like, I don't think she's actually very big in real life. I have never seen her in real life. Um, over in, oh god, it's like 
the most famous museum in the world, and I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> but I, I believe she's r actually a lot smaller than the scale that this is bringing, but I'm not totally for sure. You know, I'm not... I did a little oil painting, but I never, like, really got into it, you know? And maybe, maybe that's why I decided to build the museum. I've been doing oil painting lately. I got into it, like, a, a while ago, and then I hadn't really painted anything for, like, the past, I don't know, eight or nine months. But recently, I've started painting again. So maybe that's why I got the museum idea stuck in my head. So... This is the first floor. It's the classic kind of floor, classical art. You know, we got some blacksmithing in here. I know that doesn't really count as classical art, but, you know, if it's of exquisite craftsmanship, it seems to fit in. Oh, I wanted to also show this uh, wall texture that I got off the Sims resource. It was awesome. I went in there looking for some kind of stone wall. And I ended up finding this, like, ivy or, like, moss stone or something. And it just looks really good on this clock tower. I really like it. Um, on to the second floor. Now, up on the second floor, it's open, as you can see. Um, and I tried these pillars in the four corners. I tried using the actual pillar items in the game. And it just looked very odd, like, very weird. It looked like it was being held up by stilts, and at any second the clock tower was going to, like, tumble over. But, um, so what I eventually did was just made little one-by-one -one rooms, and then, uh, you know, textured them to look like the stone wall. And it looks like four pillars, and it turned out really good. Put some plants around them, because this second floor is our plant exhibit i guess you could call it where we have exotic plants and you know we have the shrubs cut in the, into the shape of animals and we have the topiary trees and just all different kinds of plants around here that's what this floor is all about you know we have the roses over here these look like some kind of lilies maybe and oh i found this bookshelf or i don't know what this is apothecary shelf i'm not sure but uh, all my plants disappeared. Okay, a little annoying. Maybe I'll fix that right on camera. But I did, before the game decided that um, that was a no-no, I had plants put in here. All different kinds. Cactuses. Um, I had this little tree plant in here. What else did I have in here? Game is throwing me for a loop here. Uh, just... You know, random little plants here on the bookshelf. It looked better last time. I spent a good deal of time making sure all these were even, you know, making sure they were all looked different and they were all turned the right way. But, you know, it's okay. The game's keeping me on my toes here, as The Sims 4 likes to do. Um, so, just different little plants here in the shelves. I really like this. I'm probably going to eventually use this idea in someone's house. Um, instead of filling it up all with plants, though, we'll probably have some books, some plants, some, you know, knickknacks. Over here, we have the homegrown kind of uh, herbs and stuff. If you're, I don't know, new, if you're learning herbs and you come to the museum, I'm sure the curator or some museum guide will be able to tell you everything you would ever want to know about these herbs. <laughs> and then we just got little plants on tables. I had apples in this bucket. See? Look, they fit perfectly in there. I had them all in there, I promise. Um, game is trying to test me today, but, you know, if you want to come sit up here, have an apple that was probably grown on the ground somewhere, you can. And over here we have some chicken sculptures because is it ever a bad idea to throw in some chicken sculptures? We have a garden gnome. We couldn't have a garden uh, exhibit without having a garden gnome, right? Like, it just seemed to fit to me. Over here, we just have a little place you can sit. We have the, uh, what are these called? Like, rag rugs or something? They're, like, homemade rugs, and they fit the scene very well, I thought, with the kind of wicker chair with the homemade pillows. You know, we'll throw in the rag rugs. They look like they fit in. We have a water feature back here behind the steps with more plants, of course, and just a place where you could um, hang out and sit if you wanted to, get some fresh air up here. 
with the hanging chairs, which are a favorite item of mine now. <laughs> They've quickly become one of my favorite items to always throw in. And this is just the little garden center, all the different types of plants. It's a little crowded, but, you know, the, if you've ever been to a plant exhibit, they're always a little crowded because, you know, you can't control a plant as well. They kind of do what they want to do when they're growing and stuff. And on the next floor <laughs> is the floor I had a little trouble with um, creatively um, until I hit a kind of... <laughs> inspiration idea or whatever you want to call it it's a little bit of a weird abstract art floor so we will go look at it uh probably gonna have to put the walls down for this because the clocks like to get in the way here this <laughs> exhibit was made by me go figure and i like to call it you know i i don't know what to call it just like lost planet or maybe new planet Basically, what the exhibit is showing is an astronaut who crash-landed on an alien planet and is trying to communicate with the alien life. That's what the exhibit's showing. And here we can see the alien horses. They are, you know, in their natural habitat of tropical ferns with a winter back scene because, you know, it makes a lot of sense. It's an alien planet. That, it's different there, okay? So these are the alien horses. They're very long-legged for, you know, whatever reason. That's how they evolved there. And, you know, we have our astronaut over here trying to tell them to help her or to go away or, you know, do something. And I put this painting back here because the circles on this made me think of, like, some kind of weird-looking planet. So maybe that was her map to get to the planet she crash-landed on. I'm not sure. But it was kind of, I don't know, I had fun building this weird little abstract <laughs> exhibit. Over here we have giant birds as part of the exhibit because on this planet, giant birds, you know, birds evolved to be gigantic for whatever reason. We have her, a model of her spaceship that she flew in on. And we have a little pig back here because... There's a pig on this planet, apparently. I threw this, I downloaded this painting and threw it into this room because the walls were blank and it needed something. But this, I originally downloaded this painting because it looks like my logo. Um, if you look at my logo for my YouTube channel, it kind of looks like my logo. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I downloaded it and I will be using it in other places. But I thought it looked good behind the birds here. It gave it kind of a landscape scene. And I could probably add some rugs and stuff up here, but I don't know. I really like it the way it is. It's kind of simple, and it's abstract, and the idea of kind of a weird planet, I don't know, it fits in with the minimalistic, I suppose. That's what, I, that's what I'm sticking with, anyway. <laughs> the next floor of the museum is modern art. Now, I didn't have too much modern art art to choose from i went and looked on the sims resource and there's a ton of modern furniture to choose from there's a ton of modern uh like wallpaper to choose from there's not a ton of art to choose from or at least that i could find because you go in the sims resource and you type in what you're looking for you know modern art oil paintings uh brick wall but just because that's what you type in, that's not what it's going to pull up. Like, you type in modern art, and it's going to pull up a couple things, but some things that would be classified as modern art aren't named modern art. They're named, you know, vase underscore one, two, and you can't ever find it unless that's what you type in. So, third floor is the art, the modern art floor. And it's, I don't know, I tried my best. Modern art typically isn't my thing anyway if you've seen me build you might know that um but i tried my best here i tried to keep it minimal and very clean now on this top floor the camera likes to fight me here um i don't know why i guess because it's the top floor and i don't know it won't let me zoom in without doing some crazy things sometimes but over here, we just have simple little still life paintings of, you know, bright colors and then just a white background. It felt kind of modern to me. We got the monolith here. It's very clean, very straight lines. 
I thought that fit in with modern art. I tried to put some like a mirror behind the circle to, I don't know, give it an extra little piece, but I couldn't fit one back there to make it look proper. Even with move objects, it was still looking a little weird. So I scrapped that idea. We have my favorite little new drawings in this game, and they're very simplistic and modern looking to me. And I, I really like these. I wouldn't mind having these in a real life house in the right setting, not in a modern setting. Uh, we have just a kind of, I don't know, cliche modern art piece of just a sculpture with lots of angles. And I thought, you know, that fit, that was right at home in this room. Uh, this black and white picture isn't probably technically modern, but I, like I said, I was working with what I had. I had to fill in some blank spaces with stuff. Um, so the sheep picture kind of got shoehorned in here. I have, you know, a mannequin, just a silhouette of a body, you know, carved out of marble or some kind of white stone. And then we have, uh... I don't know what to call it, hu pictures of a actual human <laughs> in a modern art type uh, environment, I suppose. And over here we just have a large vase sculpture, which I tried to put flowers in, but I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. So it's just a large marble vase sculpture, which I thought fit with the room very well. I This is probably like one of my favorite pieces in here, because it fit with the modern aspect as well as being like a real piece of art, like a real sculpture. I thought it was cool. And then we have this weird painting uh, back here of some kind of tree entity, an int of some kind, maybe. Um, so I don't know if that fit in here, but it was a blank wall, so I threw it in. And we have the rug, of course. I felt like it was kind of a modern art piece. And we have a dog sculpture, if the camera would quit fighting me. Well, we have the dog sculpture and a couple flowers. There we go. Now you can see it. Everything's roped off again because we can't have people touching anything. They'll ruin it and deface its value. Now we have one more floor to go up into. And it is the attic. And in order to look under the roof, we have to take down the walls completely. And then we just have a little room in here. Now, I did the half walls, not because they serve as actual walls, but, you know, if you were to live up here, obviously with the walls being so short, you would be able to see the roof kind of concave above your head. However, having the half walls gives it a sense of... Um, a sense of being in an actual room, I suppose, as well as giving you a little privacy, I suppose, if... I don't know. I, I guess it gives you this false sense of privacy. <laughs> I mean, you're still technically under a roof, so no one can see you. But just being in an open room like that, I don't know. It would feel very weird to me. So this is the little curator's quarters upstairs. If you were to take care of this museum, this is where you get to live. It's very small, but it's very functional. Um... I didn't finish it all the way, but I wanted to record today because everybody was out of the house, so... Um, all I had left to do was put in, you know, the knickknacks on the counter and the rugs. Nothing too important, but I wanted to show you guys this room. You know, he's got his refrigerator, his kitchen. We built small, which I've had practice doing, if you saw my other uh, recent recording of building the teeniest, tiniest house. Like, if you think this is small... Go check out my house that I built. It's an entire house underground, and it's so tiny. <laughs> but, you know, we have a dining area over here, and then we have a bathroom area. The camera likes to fight me up here as well. Gonna try to get in here. We have a bathroom area, and now this is a... It's not a half wall, but it's um, a wall using the half wall tool. It's as big as you can get without being an actual wall. So I figured, you know, for the bathroom, you probably want a privacy wall, just in case someone walks up here that's not supposed to. You know, you have uh, your toilet in here, you have a shower. I've been using these showers all the time, but these, like, standalone shower heads are so good in tight quarters. Like, if you're ever building small, you want to use these uh, standalone shower heads. They just work. They're, you don't have to fight anything. They look 
like they actually fit in the room better than a boxed in shower i don't know i really uh liked building with them in small quarters anyway and so that's just the bathroom area nothing crazy you have a sink in here and a shower and a toilet all the necessities uh i do need to probably put some form of entertainment up here Let's see what we have as far as that Oh, here's where we keep the clocks. See, I've always had to search for clocks every time I want one. I had no idea where they were being kept. Don't we have, like, a virtual reality headset? Was that in Sims 3? Am I thinking of the wrong thing? This is under TVs. This is something new I downloaded. Um, activities. Hmm. What can we give this guy? Oh, yeah, now we have the virtual reality boxes. The headsets must have been in Sims 3. Well, see, I don't even know where we could hang a TV up here. I have to look at it. What is this? A yoga mat. We can give him a yoga mat. He could do, like, yoga as his pastime. But this is just the little, little living quarters. Nothing too crazy. And this is the Clock Tower Museum. So, we get, you know, we have the classical floor the kind of garden floor, the garden, or the topiary kind of uh, exhibit. And then we have the abstract lost planet exhibit that I really like, actually. <laughs> and then we have the modern floor, and then in the attic we just have the curator's quarters. And of course we have the landscaped yard, which is kind of an art in and of itself. And I've really enjoyed building this building. I like the way it turned out on the outside. It looks really good. Um, I was a little scared because you can only build, like, what is it, four floors up, and then uh, the fifth floor is the attic. But I was a little scared it was going to look, like, short and frumpy because <laughs> we couldn't get it real tall, like an actual clock tower. But it turned out pretty good, right? It's just a small town kind of tourist trap attraction. Um, you know, something that they had to funnel their park, parks and wrecks fund into and i don't know I, I enjoyed building it if you liked this building or thought it was interesting in any way please leave me a like subscribe if you'd like to see some more sims 4 content and i will see you all next time back in sims 4